So welcome. There's a session. I did this session for the first time last year, but it's an update. So it's showing you a year what happens in the modern community and what happens. We're also going to touch some things like EXP, etc. Uh, we're mostly going to focus on what's happening in the Maori community and how it relates with Drupal. Uh, so, who am I? I'm Dominic. I'm a CEO and a CTO from Solid. I've been in Drupal community for, for a while. Also in Matic. I'm also in the Matic Council. It's a bit uh, comparable with uh, Drupal Association boards. Um, Matic also has a governance structure. I'll go in more details, you'll understand more about the Matic community after this session. Um, so first, let's get a couple of concepts in your mind so you can get the, a bit more context, context. So who knows what a DXP is? Huh? Okay. About half of, uh, half of the room. So. I'll explain it. Could uh, be perceived as something uh, new to sell CMS, something that's uh, already out there for a long time. Uh, a clever trick of the marketers to sell more uh, more CMS, but it's actually something much more. So, um, digital experiences really focus on putting the customer central, and to do this. We're getting data from all kinds of platforms, user behavior data, customer is also touching a lot of different channels, um, using a, a lot of different systems to compose all this. And the biggest difference between CMS is the data component. So the data component is entering, because the data component allows you to do personalization, allows you also to do email marketing, uh, allows you to use AI, all kinds of stuff to make the experience a lot more engaging. So if you look at the, uh, the most basic form of a, of a DXP these days, you would have your CMS, which is uh, the experience layer, and you would have your data and content layer, where you have your platforms like marketing automation, CDP, and then if you want to go a step further, you can also hook into these with your uh, AI. Now, what is Motic? Motic is the largest open source marketing automation community. It's there to help businesses automate processes, processes mainly focused on marketing, communication, but also yeah, on, on, on a lot of other fronts, like on the operational front, Marty can have uh, a big added value. It's an ecosystem just like Drupal, you can see already, like they put the, the three biggest contributors on the, on the homepage of the website every month, so you can already recognize a couple of companies who are also active in, uh, in the Drupal community. Um, a bit about the history, so now, 10 years, this year, 2014, got released as an open source platform. Um, uh, it was acquired by Acquia in 2019. And then last year, it got spun out as uh, an independent organization. So Market is a fully governed independent uh, organization with a council, with a governance uh, good model. And uh, yeah, it, has, uh, it does not have the benevolent dictator model. It's actually a democracy. So people can vote to elect council members, and council members vote to approve proposals. So, it's very democratic. Um, I think it's pretty unique, the governance model. So, if you look at it, it's, it's in many countries, a lot of partners, a lot of organizations using it. Um, it's growing. It's growing pretty, pretty good last year. Um, 
how is it run? Eh? So it also uses the open startup model, so everything is reported in the Excel, so you can basically see everything from the financial statements to how many installs to like it's open, it's on the market book, uh, you can check it out. Um, they're also reporting just like in the Drupal community who are the most active community, uh, most active partners. And you can see that, yeah, you recognize also companies from the Drupal community. This was the old governance model. Yeah. Now the new one is the council. And then the project team that stay more or less the same. Um, so on all the critical parts, we have uh, a team leader on the product, on the marketing, on the community, uh, on the education, uh, and they are supported with assistant teams. So even though it's still a young organization, um, it does have some structure. What I'm most excited about is the growth. So if you look at the growth, so these are the detected instances. And what's special about this is that in the last year, Matic actually doubled in the uh, in number of installs in one year. So it took like nine years to get to 20k installs. And then in one year, it went all the way up to 40,000. I don't have an explanation for it, why this is. Uh, I have theories. Uh, and yeah, I think it's because of the, a lot of SaaS providers, they increase their prices. Um, and there's also concerns about data and privacy, which drives a lot of organizations towards adopting Product like Matic, which is fully open source, you can install it on your own server. It's fully yours. You control all the data. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it continues. Uh, this year, we had a, a Matic in India, and there's more people who were there. Uh, Boris and Nico, <laughs> we were there together. Uh, they can also testify like, okay, it was, it was like your smaller Drupal camp, huh? so like 70 people, but the vibe was really good, and there was a lot of excitement, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, thinking about marketing Drupal, uh, marketing even more, and that's why also we, we reach out to, to the Drupal community to keep Matic top of mind as one of the platforms where Matic can connect with. Uh, but it's still a startup, it's still a small community compared to Drupal. Uh, I started in Drupal community around 2007, 8 I think, and it kind of reminds me about those days like when it really it, it was getting started, so it was still early days, and you had this explosive growth in, uh, in Drupal back in those days. Um, so I, I see and I feel the potential of this, uh, of this exciting community. Now, what's the involvement of DropSolid as a company uh, where I work for? So we're red represented in. in in the council, we're also delivering the product lead, we're a diamond sponsor, and we're also hosting the free trials. So you can actually try Matic. So you just go to uh, matic.org and you click the trial button and you can just try it out. So uh, it's something we launched a couple of months ago. Um, it's running really well uh, in, in terms of, uh, so we got between uh, three to five hundred new trials a month. Uh, biggest countries are Brazil, India, USA. Um, what you actually see here is the free trial, what you run through, if you do the free trial, configured with Matic itself. 
So we'll dive a little bit deeper in the features of Mardik, but one of, one of the steps, one, one of the main features of Mardik is to go through a multi-step campaign. If you're doing a free trial for any SaaS product, you're being driven through a funnel, and depending on which choices you take, you end up in different places. So what you see here is, uh, is exactly this. We configured the free trials of Mardik with Mardik. Um, we see that Mavic is being used from solopreneurs, one-man shops, all the way to the largest enterprises. So it's pretty broad, um, and they're all using it for different reasons. But what is it like? Let's dive a little bit uh, deeper in the in the features. Uh, so, in a marketing automation platform. Uh, different than Mardi, you have your contact management. So if someone is browsing the website, the tracking code you install in Mardi from the website, it will track everything and it will put it in a database and once someone gives his email address, that entire history becomes visible. So once that happens, yeah, you can start to segment your audience. You can segment based on Whatever they have done, like you can discover interest, maybe they submitted values which allow you to segment even further. And then you can start to score them. So you can score your different uh, prospects who are in your database, give them points, do triggers on them, and of course then you're gonna send them emails, then you need to configure your emails so you're building with a builder. It's a bit similar like layout builder in Drupal, but then for emails, drag and drop, reporting, and the multi-step campaigns where you select, okay, when this happens, you do this, you send an email, you send, uh, you go back to a certain page, you let people go through the entire, uh, the entire funnel. You want to capture information on certain stages. So there's a, a form builder. The form builder you can uh, configure with a preference center because the customer, he wants also to determine like how many mails do I want to get and from which categories, etc. It's also to uh, be sure that you're compliant so people can unsubscribe. And how does it work all together? So first you're capturing uh, with these features, uh, so you're putting out your forms, you're dividing your customers into segments, behavior, you learn from them, you give them points, you drive them through stages, uh, you execute your campaigns and then you engage, you automate flows, workflows, you nurture your customers and all the way at the end your customers are far more engaged. Now, uh, if you look at the features, you could say, uh, as an organization, you're not going to do, uh, from the get-go, the full uh, omni-channel automation. We probably will go in stages. We'll start pretty simple with one channel, a couple of campaigns, and then you go cross-channel, maybe do a CRM integration, etc. So. It goes step by step. Um, embedding in the website, there's a module for Drupal which allows you to easily embed it in the website. Whether you use Layout Builder or Paragraphs, doesn't matter. It's it's pretty pretty easy to integrate it. There's two uh, market integrations: a basic one and an advanced one. So the advanced one allows you to pull even more data out of Matic and use it in uh, in Drupal. Um, so once you have this, and I'm referring back to it, you have Drupal and Matic, basically you have your mini DXP at that point. You're capturing data, you have the CMS, you're using it, you're driving and you're using it based on this behavior. That's the most minimalistic definition of a DXP on its own. Drupal is actually not a DXP. It's a good basis, good CMS as 
the basis for the DXP within itself, it's not. So it needs other platforms to call itself a DXP. And <coughs> doing it with other open source software, of course, makes it an open DXP, which has other advantages. And it's composable. So what you see here is a composable architecture where you can plug and play different, uh, different applications and fit the DXP into the IT uh, architecture of the procedure. And you can also explain that even Drupal itself and Arctic itself is also composable because they both have a plugin and a module system that allows you to extend it. So Drupal is getting the, the increased size as being a monolithic system, but in fact, with its module system, you could argue it's just as, uh, it's just as uh, composable as any microservices based uh, architecture. I would even argue that Drupal is a managed uh, microservices architecture which has a lot of value because we don't have to manage it. But that's a whole other discussion. Um, you could also argue that you could use Matic as a customer data platform. Uh -huh. okay basic customer data platform because Martin also allows you to build personalized web pages. It's pretty simple to, to use it and it has segments so in essence you could argue it's like a lightweight CDP as well which allows you to yeah, change different, uh, different forms, different sections of the websites and drive personalization. And of course, in the emails, uh, that same personalization could also be, uh, be used. In the DXP we propose to our customers, we also have uh, Unomi. Unomi is a CDP engine, you know, where we provide the interface on top of it. Why do you, would you use a CDP engine? That's for scalability. And also, if you want to connect up uh, more data sources, uh, because that modding does not allow you to do, it's just a marketing automation system which also captures data and the segmentation. Once you have more data sources, that's the point where you can move to uh, yeah, to a CDP engine. And then, of course, analytics allowing the TXP to connect with uh, with analytics sending the segments towards Google Analytics as custom dimensions. So basically what it does is you have your Google Analytics and you get an extra dimension based on the segments that you have defined. So yeah, you would be able to, like, let's say, you identify a certain segment on your website of certain customers, you collected the data, you can see what are my conversion rates, what is my time on site by sending that custom dimension to, to like Google Analytics. So it's very powerful. I uh, have a couple of, I have featured here uh, a couple of cases. Uh, so uh, I'll start with the first one. This is also uh, actually a multimatic and I'll dive a little bit deeper into the multimatic. So multimatic is a, a use case where your customer does not have one, one marketing automation platform, but this is the Flemish government. They distributed uh, Matic towards all of their subsidiaries in all the different countries from which they want to send tourists <coughs> to Flanders. So what they did is, okay, everybody gets this Matic uh, access, and they as a, as a organization, they build the campaigns and they distribute it to all their uh, subsidiaries which they can customize in their language with their call to actions and send it back uh, and, and then drive their campaigns on their level. So it's comparable to a Drupal multi site. The, the architecture will go a little bit deeper uh, in, a, in a second. Second case is uh, now we send uh, 7,000 different day, uh, daily emails, all personalized. The reason is this is a customer with a huge offering, like a lot of different categories of, uh, 
of different um, farmers. They have to send very specific information about their, uh, their target group. And the great thing about this is that normal open rates of like, normal campaigns, which are not personalized, is around 20%. You personalize, you get it up all the way to uh, 40%. And then this one, this is a new case that we recently launched. It's, uh, it's a new name of a uh, cabinet. Uh, it's uh, the Catholic Church in uh, Belgium who launched uh, a full uh, DXP uh, with us uh, using all its components. And you can see uh, they even achieved a uh, 48% open rate. So, uh, because of the using the data in the correct way, the integration with Drupal, like personalizing, and they have a huge offering in content there, so they have a redaction, they have, um, yeah, millions of hits on the website, people looking for uh, spiritual content, so uh, it's very, very valuable. It's basically a new site, a media site uh, for religious content. Now, there's some uh, enhancement for, for Matic. So the core development also really, uh, really starts to, to go forward. Like in a couple of months, there was many, many improvements. And at Drop Solid, like we are driving a lot of the, of the contribution. And so we have two full-time contributors on, uh, on Matic. And one of them is really focusing on the UX because we think UX it needed it needed to change in Mardic. Like it's it really stops people from adopting Mardic, thinking like ah oh, it's too difficult. HubSpot is really polished interface. It's easy. I understand it. So we listen to that uh, to that feedback and um, yeah, we we just uh, did a lot of UX improvements. I'm gonna gonna get back to this. Uh, another thing is like, like in every platform that evolves pretty quickly, uh, fixing the bugs is, uh, is pretty critical. Like making sure that people's, people's stuff don't break because there's already 40,000 plus installations. So, you know, we need to support it. To give you an idea, there's 750,000 Drupal installations. So you can see this in comparison, it's still a small community. Drupal used to have 1.2 million installations. So you see that it's, it's still, uh, in terms of size and installs, there's still a lot of growth, uh, growth potential. So a lot of bugs got fixed, uh, mobile usability, better development experience. And if you look at the interface on the screen, isn't that great? But uh, who did ever log in to a Matic instance? Yeah? Okay. So you know the interface. So 5.1 is going to be released with 80 PR requests improving the user experience. And it's all done by Anderson, he's a Brazilian developer uh, who is sponsored by DropSolid to, uh, to do this work. So he just did like a lot of a lot of things, like a lot of small stuff, but it's gonna make a huge impact on the usability of the system. Like just the way some things were done in Matic UX wise didn't, didn't make sense and people just got lost. Like for example, this is the new visual builder, that's the old one, that's the new one. Um, I think it looks already a lot, uh, a lot better, but we'll see it in the adoption statistics, I think, because UX makes a big difference in it. Now, the Multimatic. I also want to talk to you about the Multimatic, because I think it's one of the best use cases you have with, uh, with Matic. Why is it? Um, if you look at products like HubSpot, if you are an organization and you want to buy 300 HubSpot licenses for each uh, 100k users, you're going to be 
Yeah. Or you have really deep pockets where you're going to say like, yeah, no, it's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So because of Matic being open source, it's possible to host many instances and drive them together. So um, what what we thought was a good idea is to facilitate this. So building these products, yeah, having a central overview, a command center as you wish, and from there distribute the campaigns to the different product instances, all the tools you need to share statistics, reports, even contacts, segments, emails, etc. Um, over the different Matic instances, allowing you to uh, really give a, a really good value proposition to companies who have many, many, many different uh, Matic users in different geographies. But they, they, they don't want to give the, the mandate to everyone, like, oh, everyone go, and go out and buy a marketing automation platform and do your thing. Every market, marketing department, no, no, we are going to give you the tools and uh, we're going to give you default campaigns, but then you will have your space to, to be productive. So that's exactly what the, the multi-matic uh, capability uh, allows you to do. Now, what about the business case for money? So, of course, eh, you, will, you, need to, you, want, you want to sell it. You want to sell it to your customers. Yeah, you need to explain to him like, okay, what is going to, uh, what is it going to do for you? What is, how is it going to make you money? And what I've noticed is, although you're often selling it to marketing departments, you're also more often than not are selling it to an IT department who is given the mandate to buy a tool for its marketing. And one of the best ways, I think, to make the business case is to um, focus on operational efficiencies because it's the easiest business case to make. You're doing now X is costing you, uh, let's say, 100. If you do the marketing automation, you free up these FTEs and they can do something else. You know? It's a very easy business case to make. And marketing automation can automate all of manual tasks that marketing departments are doing. And the more they are doing it, uh, the easier it is to make the business case. Like the next one is uh, reducing acquisition costs. So that means, okay, uh, you're doing campaigns, you're doing a lot of uh, outreach to your customers. If you're doing marketing automation, you have automated campaigns, you're activating your database all the time, uh, you're working on top of that, it's, it should deliver leads uh, to your sales team automatically. So it's also a business case that can be made. And then the more difficult business cases are stuff like um, increased engagement, it's a bit more difficult to make or satisfaction, customer life and value. You can make calculations where it's a, it's more a back of the envelope calculation. But if the customer wants to see it, he will, he will, uh, he will see it. Um, and if you look at, at the value of, of, uh, of building such a platform, so then I'm talking about the TXP, so the combination of a market and a, and a Drupal, you can basically make a business case for every department in the organization. Yeah, because if someone, if a customer is buying a DXP, it's not, it's not one department. They'll probably be asking, okay, we want a digital transformation partner. Um, but the question being asked is, okay, we want a DXP, actually what we need is a digital transformation and the DXP is going to drive it. <coughs> so, this is some statistics from, uh, from, from the, the Mate community, uh, which I got from our consultants at McKinsey. So there's a lot of content out there to make a business case for marketing automation. 
but however, if you look at the market, very few companies are actually already using it. Still, this technology is not like, all, like almost every business has a website right now. Huh? But it's not the case with marketing automation. So I believe there is still a lot of potential for marketing automation as a, as a market itself. Now, okay, uh, this one is like to explain the customer why we invest in an open source uh, marketing, marketing automation platform or an open DXP or a DXP in the first place. If you would only be investing in a CMS at a certain point, you, you would just yeah, plateau out on capabilities. If you add the data component to it, you can grow a lot further. Um, if you look at if you look at the market, uh, we have a huge company like uh, HubSpot in the market. That's the market leader, by the way. Uh, HubSpot is like the reference. They've sold like 190k installation. They have 1.7 billion revenue, 30 billion market valuation on the Nasdaq. Uh, so they have captured a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of businesses. I think they are hosting like. 650,000 instances, 600, that's, that's, that's as big as Drupal in terms of numbers, almost. It's just one proprietary uh, company that is doing this. Um, Matic, uh, didn't update the slide, we're at 45k now. It's only 45k instances. So, for me, you could say like, oh, it's all that I see as a lot of potential. No, because it's such a big market and you have this one company who captured so much value already um, by being fast. But now, still have a couple of minutes. How you would get started? How many of you are developers? No? Okay, if you want to get your hands dirty, you can install it locally uh, with, with DDEV, just clone it and uh, you do DDEV start and you got it. So it's pretty easy normally to get it up. I have heard stories that people are not able to get it up and running, but uh, yeah. There's a Matic.ddev site, so it improved a lot. And of course, if you just want to try it and see the interface, there's a free trial. Uh, if you want to go further with it and try out all solar stuff, there's the Drop Solid website, of course. Uh, um, and now, just to, to wrap it up, I just want to talk a little bit of the benefits of bringing these communities uh, together. Uh, because I really think like the strength of Matic and Drupal and presenting an open DXP to your customer is really powerful. Uh, it shares also on the framework level, it's both built in Symfony. Uh, so yeah, it is, it is not that difficult for a Drupal developer to get into Matic development. Like at TropSolid, we have several developers who used to be Drupal doing a lot of modding development at the moment. So it's, it's like, okay, there is a ramp up, you need to get to know the framework a bit and how it's implemented, but it's still Symfony, and if you're like on a medium senior level, you should be able to, to do it. Um, also, there's a, a, an open plugin library, so it's like the module system in Drupal, it has an, an open REST API, it's a flexible data model, it also has a system with hooks, has a Drupal integration, so we'll see a lot of things coming back. And I also think in, 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 ter in terms of contribution, the time to merge is really, really quick, like if you want to contribute and you want to do stuff, if you want to do a Drupal core patch, for example, it takes some time, but with Matic, 
Yeah, it grows pretty fast, and you, you see a result of your work, and it gets shipped pretty uh, pretty fast. Um, so that's why we can, like, in one quarter, we can do 80, 80 PR, uh, PRs and uh, merge it in a couple of months. Uh, also, there's some exciting new news, I think, also on the community level. Like, for example, the Drupal Association is also one of the sponsors of Martin. The Typo, Typo 3 Foundation is also becoming a sponsor of Martin. Uh, the Joomla community recently, they um, completely released a new, uh, new connector with Martin. And there's also talks with the WordPress Foundation, because you see these open source uh, CMSs, they're starting to realize like, oh, okay, we, like, the customer is asking for more than just the CMS. So they also see the value of partnering up with a, a, an organization like Modic on an organizational level to bring together an open DXP and make sure that they can compete against proprietary products that offer all these capabilities just out of the box. So that's interesting, an interesting uh, dynamic that, that uh, CMS communities are sponsoring uh, marketing automation projects, open source marketing automation. And so I think it's really excited to, uh, to see that happening. How many of you are an agency owner? One? Yeah. Selling it together. Huh? So, basically, you can build it together as developers, but you can also use it in your agency. Uh, your agency has to do marketing, so why not use an open source marketing automation? We fully implement it for Drop Solid. Like all the stuff like all the campaigns is all done with Matic. We used to be on HubSpot. We do everything with Matic. For us, it's working, it's working perfectly. And it was well, already a, a long time ago, six years ago, uh, we switched. And that's how we got excited about Matic because we saw like, what it could do for us as a company. And that's how we got into it and started contributing and build it into our product. and. You know, like really getting involved with the with, with, uh, with the community. Uh, so starting to use it for your own is like one of the best ways, I think, to to get it off the ground because then you can also sell it to your customers. Once you know it for yourself, you will also be able to explain the value. So to conclude. Um, I think we need to keep trying to uh, bring these communities together. Um, it brings more than just ties, more than just the sum of the pieces. And it's a, a piece of the puzzle to, to sell the DXP to your customers. To it. Matic makes Drupal more relevant and Drupal makes Matic more relevant. And you can develop together, we can sell it together. Um, and we can market together. So that's it. Thank you very much. I don't know if we still have time for questions. Yeah, five, five minutes. Uh, five minutes? Okay, yeah, if someone has a question. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, when does it end for Mountain? And when do you start needing a separate solution for uh, that, such as Christopher Dapp? Like a, like a CDP, yeah, once you have multiple data streams. Like if you want to build like a golden customer record, let's say from CRM data, from behavior data, from app, uh, app data, like data coming from every source, like you will have to have a place to manage it. And that's what you typically do in an and then you so For aggregation, it. actually. For aggregation, yeah. So, so they should call it the customer data aggregation? That's one of its features, yeah, but it, it, it does even more things than uh, that. They said, like, if you could have, like, a more advanced uh, segmentation, uh, we could also have, most CDPs have built-in analytics. And scalability, we get, like, like we, have, we have a customer that's sending, like, millions of requests. 